She found me on Craigslist when I was a two years foreigner. A social security card screaming in carbon letters, do not hire under the penalty of law. So I was working as seamstress for hire for rich women in Birmingham with closets the size of my old country and yet nothing to wear. They liked my silence, the discretion of my hands, the thousand yard stare I wore for a face. They taught me how to keep my place. They paid me leftovers, gas money, and last season shoes. They taught me for their kind, unlike my kind, starvation was a necessary choice. She has the name of old steel money and golden plaques on lobbies of hospitals and libraries all over Birmingham. She wants me to construct her a white noise replica of her mother's wedding dress. Same color, same petite, constricting size. She says she intends to fit, that is shrink fast and tough on time for the wedding. When I say, miss, I'd be more than happy to build you a gorgeous gown in your own beautiful size. After all, I believe in making clothes for the body, not the other way around. She turns her back to me, an angry ship, the mast of her spine protruding beneath designer sails of silk. I am blasphemy and untruth to say she doesn't have to mold bones to fit inside the cavern of that dress, to unholy the garment, to shun it as a cathedral of trimmed women's voices what would I know coming from burning bush what it means to come from evergreen bristle southern girls been raised on that religion duty to be pretty worthy to be seen believing only in the gospel according to mirrors they wait for her everywhere all clean cut and white shirt smile like a pack of latter-day saints always ready to recruit she wants to know if I'll help her but all I can hear is my own grandmother's voice, the words she said to me. First time she sat me behind a sewing machine. Boye, Bukurin, Moseshkatro. Make beauty. Do not destroy it. But the numbers she write on my price tag is followed by way too many zeros to ignore. Thus begins our ritual. She comes to try the dress often, asks me to zip her in. My mouth is a hot tub full of dumb bridesmaids when I say suck in. And when the zipper's teeth still don't meet, she becomes closed doors and running water. I stand in the middle of the room trapped. I swear I cannot understand how someone can have everything and yet be so miserable. I am unfair. I want to threaten to shred this dress with the fangs of my shears. I want to tell her to shut up. Like she already hasn't. I don't know how to tell her about my country, about rape camps about mothers and daughters in the same room, same men breaking into them again and again with hammers and wrenches and fingers of thick trees molding their bones into shame they have to wear seven generations of shattered blood. I want to tell her two years in this country means nothing in the sea of unforget. I'm two years of unwords, un poems, undone. I am a lost narrative thread. My sewing machine cannot stick like a typewriter it cannot master the dialect of my longing the jaws are tight with tension they were not built for words the needle is an unreliable tongue piercing through my solitude through miles and miles lost in translation I want to tell her I don't ever want to finish this cursed dress because I have seen what wearing shrapnel can do to a woman's landscape then I think of my own fears of deportation, an entire semester's tuition, my own wedding plans. So I sew for her again at night when the radio plays static to kill the unbearable silence of a city that once used to fight people with bursting water and unmuzzled dogs. A city ran by her grandparents, their steel furnaces, their luncheons with the governor. In the morning, when the humidity starts creeping through the screen door, like the memory of violence neither one of us can escape, I see my grandmother's face folded upon mine on the window pane, and I'm ashamed of myself. What must she think of me, getting paid to zip a woman into her own silk cage? The day I handed over the dress, 
My silhouette slipped, a murderous quiet to the kitchen door, once used by her family's black maid. And that is the last time I ever handed a woman a weapon against herself. Thank you so much.